Hi there. Today I'm going to show you one small little tool within the spatial epi package available at NAR. And the specific tool is the spatial scan. Now there's software out there, SatScan, which is a very efficient, very fast, very effective, very flexible tool for doing this. But if you ever want to do some of the spatial analysis inside of R, specifically using the spatial scan method, you have some ability to do that within R using this uh, spatial epi package. Now, there could be other packages that do that too. I'm not actually sure. But I just want to do a little demonstration. Part, but before I actually go on to show you the, the, um, how the tool works, I want you to, I want to explain how the technique works a little bit too. Just some of the non-statistical but operational details. So I'll start with that now. So the idea behind using the spatial scan is that it's a it's a really exhaust very very exhaustive and well thought out way of scanning likely clusters usually in compact or circular shapes and the procedure involves kind of incrementally or in a stepwise fashion in Vegas investigating lots of possible areas where clusters could exist and then calculating this uh, log likelihood ratio test for each one of those clusters selecting the one that's largest and then doing some Monte Carlo testing on that particular cluster to find out how likely we would have seen it if risk was uniform in the study area. So it's very targeted at the most likely cluster. You can often look at secondary clusters as well, but it's very targeted at the, at the idea of looking at the most likely cluster. And the search procedure as it's typically done works like this. So in this, you start out with any node and you slowly add incrementally to that node or that area or that location and you keep adding and at some point in time and if for each step you're calculating this this test statistic this log likelihood ratio and you keep calculating it and keep going and keep going at some point you stop and after you stop you start somewhere else and you continue the search and in this particular case in this example you search in um, in order of closeness so you started started a particular location so this one here let's say and then you go to the next closest one, and then you go to the next closest one, and then you go to the next closest one, and at each step you're calculating this test statistic. So you're, calcula you're calculating a lot of these test statistics. And after you've done it for, you do this for every node, then you go to the, after you've got these ones, you go to the next one, and you just keep going like this. Go to this one, you add another node, you add another node, you keep, you keep adding the nodes or the areas, and you keep going, and at each step you're calculating this test statistic. And at some point in time you stop, and once you stop, you look. then you look at all those test statistics. And the one that's largest is the one that you basically do your statistical testing against. So you're not testing every possible cluster. You're really targeting it on one of them, the one that's most likely to cause the rejection of the null hypothesis that there, the, there, the, there's no variability in the data spatially. OK, with that demonstration out of the way, I'm going to get to actually showing you how to use the package. So the spatial epi package, you've got to install that package first, and now I'm just going to make the library make the package available. And then I'm going to create a data set. So I'll do this in a couple steps here. So I'm for the first thing I'm doing is creating an x and y coordinate, because this is a spatial method. You actually can, it can be one dimensional. You can be looking for using this method on a single dimension, like it can be a temporal scan, but this I'm going to use a spatial scan here. So there's so you've got to create a few things, or you got to have to have a few inputs when you're using this method. You have to have coordinates, one or two dimensions. You need to have population data and case data, and uh, that's partly it, it's partly the way that this particular package works. So I'll just show you. In the application we're going to be using now, which is the Poisson model, this is the model in which we, you'd typically be trying to look for clusters within data that are rates, so rate data, not not case control data, for example, which is another technique. So so the data frame I've made, and this is the, basically the structure you need, you have an X and Y coordinate where the scans will be searching from, these points. And then you have a reference population and case data, and that's how the statistics will be calculated. So they use, use the population and case data to collect the statistics, and it uses the spatial location to actually do the searching. Okay. So now I've got these data generated. 
I'm also going to calculate an overall rate. So this overall rate is the rate for the whole study area. And from that, if we take that rate and we multiply it by the population of each node that we're searching or area that we're searching, we come up with an expected number of cases. So this, you could consider this is the, 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 the number of cases you'd expect if the risk in each area was equal to the overall rate. So this is kind of your null hypothesis. Your, your, this is the number of cases you'd expect in every area if, if, the, if the variability in risk was exactly the same. So we can just see here the expected, the expected is kind of close. In this particular case, the expected value in the case data values are pretty close. And the reason is because these are randomly generated data. We, we would expect them to be close to each other because there's no, this is, there's no actual cluster here. I'm just doing this for illustration purposes. Okay. Now, because of the, the input that's required for this particular function within this spatial epi uh, package, I'm creating a, in this case here, it's a data frame of just the coordinates by themselves. There, there's a number of way you, ways you can input it, but I find this to be the easiest way to do it. And then to actually use the tool, to use this little function, we, we, we type in Kaldorf, that's the name of the function. Then the first thing we specify are the x and y coordinates, the points that we're searching from. Our case data, the population data, and then that expected, the expected data. This population upper bound is a parameter that sets how large, it basically constrains the cluster to not being too big, the clusters that you're searching for. So the upper bound of 0.25, I believe, means the clusters can't be, can contain more than 25% of the total population. This is the number of simulations you need. This is for the, the significance testing, the Monte Carlo test. And the alpha level, uh, I'm, I'm not actually sure what this is for. It could be a threshold for determining what other clusters, um, what, how many secondary clusters you're looking at. But at any rate, we'll just run it once. And the one disadvantage I find to using it here in R rather than using SatScan is it's a bit slow. SatScan's probably faster to run it. I'm not exactly sure why. SatScan is really optimized to be fast. It's, I think it's written in Java. It's very fast. Uh, in R, it's a bit slower. It's one of the disadvantages to using it, but it's but it's handy if you, if you do all your other analysis in R to kind of unify your analysis. Anyway, when you run it, one thing you one nice thing you do get is this little graph that basically is plotting out where your statistic is the the largest um, likelihood ratio that you find in your in in your data and how it compares to the distribution of the Monte Carlo simulations. And you can see that because the obs observed um, uh, test the observed li log likelihood is very much right in the middle of the Monte Carlo simulations. It suggests that there's nothing really interesting going on. There's not really a cluster, which is what we'd expect because these data are random. And then I do a little bit of processing around this to uh, so that I can plot out the data. It, this is not part of the functionality of the software, but I just did a little bit of extra uh, coding here to, so that we can actually plot out the 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 cluster so identify the hits so these are the locations where the cluster uh, is included so these are the areas that are found within the most likely cluster and then we I create some variables here some new variables here and I get this all this stuff install the ggplot library and then we can actually plot this all out like this so if I run it like this now I get a plot where in this case the most likely cluster is just one area. You can see it, the number of hits, or it may, might be more than one. Let's run it again so it's a little bit more, see if we can find a cluster that's actually got more observations in it. So here we go. This is a cluster with a few more observations. You can actually see them They're right there. This is the cluster, the most likely cluster location. So this is just a way to visualize it using the same point data, um, but just to visualize the output because that doesn't seem to come with the function by itself. This little Calder function doesn't really by itself allow you to visualize it. You gotta do a couple of extra steps to visualize the cluster. But anyway, that's how it works. I've not really gone into explaining how it works in any detail, but, but that's the basic idea behind it. Thanks.